this video, we want to look at the influenza virus morphology, etc. In the last video, we have just seen an introduction to influenza. So, what and all we saw? <clears throat> we saw that uh, influenza, uh, the disease uh, is actually, the epidemiology is huge. There are, it is a pandemic and uh, annually there are a lot of deaths, lakhs and lakhs of deaths annually globally. In 2010, there was a pandemic of H1N1. And in 2014, H3N2, H3N2 in Pondicherry in 2014. So basically, what is this uh, H2, H1N1, H3N2, all this are because of antigenic variation. The influenza virus is able to come up with different types of uh, influenza, right? The epidemiology, you should know. Now, this also affects the pigs and the birds. So you have uh, birds, which are the primary reservoir of influenza virus. So that is why whenever there is... <clears throat> a breakout of uh, swine flu or avian flu, they cull these animals. Now, clinical features of uh, influenza virus, we saw that uh, it actually will be asymptomatic or it can just cause a common cold-like situation. However, the fever will get worsened after some time and uh, <clears throat> there can be complications like pneumonia, other upper respiratory tract uh, complications. Uh, there could be uh, other pulmonary com complications like COPD, exa exacerbation of chronic bronchitis and asthma. <clears throat> there can be Ray syndrome, that is, uh, touch your uh, head and say encephalopathy. The fatty degeneration of liver and <clears throat> encephalopathy, which can be fatal. Okay. So, this much we have seen, right? We saw also the treatment. Remember, Oselta Mi Vir. Oselta Mi Vir. It is also called as Tammy flu. It is given for influenza. You should take for five days. So, you also have the M2 inhibitor. This is the matrix protein M2, M2 inhibitor. You have amantadine and remantadine. So, basically here, uh, most of the strings are uh, resistant, they say. So, anyways, remember amantadine and remantadine. Okay. Now, let us come to influenza. What does it? Influenza virus causes influenza, right? It causes flu syndrome. It causes influenza, right? So, this is what type of virus? So, this is the structure of the virus. Just look at it. <coughs> what you see here, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 segments of RNA. So, RNA, it is an RNA virus. So, what type of a RNA virus it is? It is a mixovirus. In mixovirus, you have orthomixovirus and paramixovirus, correct? So, under orthomixovirus or orthomixoviridae, you have influenza virus. So, <coughs> You should know that what exactly do you mean by mixovirus? Mixovirus means, mixo actually means mucin. Okay, mixo actually means mucin. So, this um, virus, they bind to the mucin receptors which are on the surface of RBC and they will result in the clumping of RBC that is going to cause heme agglutination. So, influenza virus will cause heme agglutination. So, please don't sleep. If you are asleep, wake up. We are looking at influenza viruses, morphology. So, we saw till now that it is an orthomixovirus. Okay. We also have another group called paramixoviridae, under which you have parainfluenza. Okay. Parainfluenza virus is paramixoviridae, remember. And you have the mumps virus, measles virus, and Nipah virus. So, rubella virus is actually not a mixovirus, remember. But it is studied under... Uh, uh, it is studied here in this chapter only because it is very similar to measles. But anyways, as of now, don't worry about uh, rubella. We have to know that there is orthomixovirus and paramixovirus. Orthomixovirus example is influenza virus. Paramixovirus example is parainfluenza virus. Then you have mumps, measles, etc. Now, what are the differences between orthomixovirus and paramixovirus? Again, let us take a wake-up call. Looks like we are feeling a little sleepy. So... <clears throat> now, we are going to look at the differences between orthomixovirus and paramixovirus. Now, the orthomixovirus is what we are concerned about. So, as of now, you already know it is spherical. It has single-stranded RNA, <clears throat> which is negative sense. You know that it is an RNA virus. RNA usually will be single-stranded. It is segmented. You saw that there are eight pieces of RNA, if you remember. Just go back here and look at this. Eight pieces of single-stranded RNA are there. And uh, in this, there is genetic recombination can be seen. Antigenic variation can be seen. 
because of this antigenic variation itself, the epidemiology you have seen that every time there's outbreak, it's a different H1N1 in 2010, H3N2, right? H3N2 in 2014, correct? It's 3 and 2 in 2014, correct. So here we are, we saw that uh, it has antigenic variation. Orthomyxovirus has antigenic variations and it has genetic recombination. The replication of the RNA happens in the nucleus. The site of replication is the nucleus. <clears throat> so where is the nucleus? In the host, correct? Nucleus and all are in the host. Example, uh, we have seen influenza virus. Same thing, we already know all this. So, nothing new here for you. Orthomyxovirus and paramyxovirus differences we saw. In paramyxovirus, there is unsegmented RNA. RNA is single stranded and it is a single piece. Okay. So, orthomyxovirus, it replicates inside the nucleus. Orthomyxovirus replicates in the nucleus. Are you able to see this color? So, orthomyxovirus replicates in nucleus. So, orthomyxovirus replicates in nucleus. Replication site of RNA nucleus. Now, let us look at the morphology of uh, this uh, um, influenza virus. So, you should know that there are three genera. There are three genera A, B and C. Okay. <clears throat> influenza A, Influenza B and Influenza C are there. Now, coming to the morphology, they are spherical. You can see here they are spherical. They have helical symmetry. What do you mean by helical symmetry? It comprises of a helical nucleocapsid surrounded by an envelope. So, there is a helical nucleocapsid surrounded by an envelope. <clears throat> okay, we will come to that later again. The viral RNA. How is the viral RNA? There are multiple segments, negative sense, single-stranded RNA. So, <clears throat> eight segments are there. Each segment codes, codes for a specific viral protein. Look at this table here. So, each segment codes for a different protein. Now, for example, uh, segment 7 codes for M1 and M2. It's not possible to remember everything. If you want, you can remember anything else of your choice. <clears throat> so, the segment 7 codes for M1 and M2. That's the matrix protein. Okay. Now, uh, just note here that uh, the site of replication is the nucleus, correct? Actually, A and B have eight segments, they are saying. They are saying influenza A and B have eight segments. And C actually has seven segments. But I think for now, if you remember eight segments, it should be enough because you don't want to overload yourself with too much. Each segment codes for a different protein, correct? Now, coming to site of replication. RNA replication occurs typically in the nucleus, right? So, in contrast to most other RNA virus which replicate in cytoplasm, this is a very, very different thing because... Uh, Influenza virus or orthomyxovirus, they replicate in the nucleus of the host. The replication of what? RNA replication. Now, coming to viral proteins, guys, wake up. We finished looking at the RNA and uh, features of the RNA and what they code for, eight segments, etc. Now, we are moving on to the viral proteins. Influenza virus con contains eight proteins. How many proteins? Eight proteins. So, you have PB1, PB2, PA, NP, HA, NA, M1 and M2. And you have non-structural proteins that are NS1 and NS2. So, how many structural proteins guys? Structural proteins you have PB1, PB2, PA, NP, matrix proteins M1, M2, hemagglutinin. HA and neuraminidase NA. So, these are all structural. Non-structural, you have NS1 and NS2. Eight structural proteins. 
Now look at this uh, PB1, PB2 and PA. These are the polymerase proteins responsible for RNA transcription and replication. So you should know these. These three are uh, responsible for the RNA transcription and replication. Are you able to see? So PB1, PB2, PA. Is there a full form given for PA anywhere? Okay, then you have the nucleoprotein. Nucleoprotein, that is NP. So this is a major capsid protein. It is associated with the viral RNA to form a ribonucleoprotein, RNP or nucleocapsid with helical symmetry. So this gives rise to Nucleocapsid. Nucleocapsid with helical symmetry. So remember when you said helical symmetry, it is of the capsid. Nucleocapsid. Now let's move on guys. Um, so hemagglutinin, HA, matrix proteins. Okay, we have to do this one now. Matrix proteins. What and all we finished till now, guys? We finished the PB1, PB2, PA and NP, right? NP only, right? Yes, NP we have finished. Now we are going to matrix proteins, M1, M2. M1 protein is the major viral protein. It forms the shell underneath the envelope. M2 proteins form the ion channels in the envelope. You can see that very clearly in this diagram. See, M2 are the ion channels. M1 are the major uh, protein. It's a shell. Okay. So, you can write that here. M1 forms the shell and M2 forms the ion channel. And you saw that the RNA segment 7 codes for matrix proteins. You remember? <coughs> here. RNA segment 7 codes for matrix proteins. So, M1 forms the shell underneath the envelope. So, if you look at this diagram, the purple color what you are seeing, that is the shell and this blue line is the envelope. Correct? So, <coughs> matrix proteins M1 shell and M2 ion channel. This much is clear, right? So, now let us move on to HA and NA. Hemagglutinin HA and neuraminidase NA. Now, uh, these are actually the glycoproteins inserted into the lipid envelope. What are these? These are the glycoproteins inserted into the lipid envelope. Are you able to see that in the diagram? H-A-N-A. These are the glycoproteins inserted into the lipid envelope. So, this blue line is the envelope. This blue circle is the envelope. And these um, heme agglutinin and neuraminidase, neuraminidase, these two are inserted. They are glycoproteins which are inserted into the envelope, lipid envelope. Okay. Coming to non-structural proteins, you have NS1 and you have NS2. Correct, guys? Are you able to see? So, non-structural proteins, we have NS1 and NS2. These are what? NS1 is actually interferon antagonist and it inhibits the pre-mRNA splicing. NS2 helps in export of molecules across nucleus. So, these are actually helping in some functions. They are not actually only structural. This one is NS1 is interferon antagonist and it inhibits pre-mRNA splicing and NS2 is it helps in export of molecules across the nucleus. Okay. So, is it clear? Did you understand? So, NS1 interferon antagonist inhibits the pre-mRNA splicing and NS2 is going to help in the export of molecules across the nucleus. So, we are done with the proteins. It's time to move on to the envelope, guys. Envelope is actually lipid lipoprotein. To it, the glycoproteins are inserted. That is the HA and the NA. We will look at the details of HA and NA. 
so now we are looking at the envelope guys wake up <coughs> envelope is this blue circle correct and it is a lipoprotein it's lipid based and to it the glycoproteins are attached that is the ha and the na see this ha is actually triangle shaped i haven't drawn clearly here it's like this triangle shaped and na is mushroom shaped okay ha is what heme agglutinin ha heme agglutinin and na is neuraminidase because you should know this neuraminidase because in neuraminidase inhibitor is the actual treatment if you have seen that is uh, what is the name of the drug you remember this neuraminidase inhibitor oselta oselta mevir oselta mevir right it is called as tamiflu tamivir oselta mevir you got it right so now let's move on morphology we are looking at correct so we are looking at the envelope now we saw that to the envelope ha and na are attached so in envelope you have ha it is triangular shaped it binds to the mucin which are on the rbcs and it causes uh, clumping of rbcs that is hemagglutination it also binds to the same receptors which are there on the epithelial cells of the respiratory you know the respiratory epithelial cells also have these mucin receptors and thus virus can enter our body so these will bind to mucin receptors on rbc and epithelial cells of respiratory tract okay so on rbc they cause what heme agglutination and epithelial cells uh, they will cause upper epithelial you know how the uh, symptoms come like common cold like flu right all because of this ha now let's move on to na na is what neuraminidase these are mushroom shaped what are they mushroom shaped this was triangle shaped guys triangle shape coming to this na that is mushroom shaped these actually help in the virus you know to pass through the mucin layer in the respiratory tract okay and it will reach the epithelial cells what is this mucin layer actually these are going to help in the reversal of hemagglutination is it interestingly it is written here that they help in reversal of of reversal of heme agglutination called as elution wow so it releases the virus particles and then the virus can penetrate is that what they mean anyways guys we are done with the morphology of influenza virus in the next video we will look at the antigenic subtypes and nomenclature and then we will look at the antigenic variation i think if they ask morphology you have to write the antigenic subtypes antigenic uh, uh, variation slightly about it also okay so let's say morphology continued in next video we will look at the antigenic subtypes in the next video okay come for the next video guys say bye bye bye